Hello all my beautiful sisters from those other misters. Welcome to my Hakuhodu buying guide. So I mentioned that I would do one of these videos ages ago. It had a pretty good reception. People seemed interested in it and then I never got around to filming it and a few people have like brought it up in other videos. They're like hurry up and do that fucking Hakuhodu guide Hayley obviously in a much nicer way um, but it's here finally thank you for your patience so I have my notes and I have my phone um, so there's probably gonna be a lot of looking down um, but essentially what I'm gonna do right now is take you through all of the Hakuhodu arrangers and give you a bit, an idea, bit of an idea um, as to what they're all about and um, maybe help people who have never shopped on Hakuhodu um, on their actual website uh, maybe give them a, a little bit of assistance with um, where to start or choosing particular types of brushes. So if you are shopping for makeup brushes on the Hakuhodu website um, I think the first thing we should get out of the way is that they do ship internationally um, and shipping fees for international customers so people who live outside of the US is 16 US dollars. It is a flat fee um, and that is the amount you pay whether you buy one brush or 500 brushes. Um, if you want express shipping it will cost you significantly more. If you are a US customer and you're having your brushes shipped to you, it's going to cost you $9 as a flat fee. Again, it doesn't matter how many brushes you buy, it is $9. Um, if you want express shipping, it goes up. So the options are there, but the shipping prices are quite affordable. On to the brushes. So I'm going to start with Hakuhodu's S100 series. This is Hakuhodu's signature brush range. And I have one here to show you. Mine's dirty, so forgive that. But essentially, this is what they look like. So they have the beautiful orange vermilion handles down the bottom. They have the little blue Hakuhodu um, logo on the tips. They are angled. These are nice weighted brushes, very light, which is great. The ferrules are 24 karat gold plated and they have a protective scratch resistant coating. They are very, very luxe and their price tag, mm, their price tag shows that. So within this range, you will find brushes that will do pretty much any job on your face. There are large and small uh, face brushes, there are large and small eye brushes, uh, there's everything. Um, from what I can tell, most, if not all, of these brushes contain some form of animal hair. Um, you have like goat and squirrel only hair brushes, um, only horse hair brushes, my god, they're they're pretty nice. Um, and then you have like combinations of the hair. So you might have goat and squirrel or goat and horse um, and some like animal hairs mixed with synthetic hairs depending on the job that the brush is supposed to do. So typically um, animal hair is only used for powder products and um, synthetic hairs are used for cream and liquid. Oh my god, such banging in my house. So synthetic uh, hairs are used for creams and liquids, but also um, animal hair and synthetic hair blends are also great for creams and liquids. The next range of brushes is the S100 Black series. And essentially what you'll find in this range is exactly what is in the S100 series, except the handles are black and they are a traditional handle. So they're not uh, a thick handle with a blue logo. They're just black. The ferrules again are 24 karat gold plated with the protective coating and the bristle or hair composition is exactly the same. So you can find this exact same brush in the S100 Black series with just a black traditional makeup handle. Um, bristles are the same, cuts are the same, everything is the same except the handles and the price tag. So the brushes within the S100 Black Series, also known as the S100 BK Series, because when you look at the numbers that are printed on the brush handle, it'll say S1 
whatever for the brush number and then so it'll be like say s um one five three and then bk for the black series now my advice if you are looking at either of these ranges and you see a brush that you really really want to own um my advice would be choose if you need the status symbol or want the status symbol of this combination the orange handle like blue tip gold ferrule thing if that is something that you want then you definitely have to go the s100 range however if you are buying the brush just for the composition of how the brush works how it's cut the hairs you're gonna probably be better off going the s100 bk series because you're going to pay a little bit less you're going to get the exact same thing it's just not gonna look like this it's not gonna have an orange handle so i do feel like i feel like this really is a status symbol it is um a representation of a, the quality of a brush um, and it it's just a bougie way of saying look at my expensive brushes now with the s100 series I bought one of these brushes because I am a brush junkie I love them and I particularly love super high quality brushes so it was for me to buy just one to add to my collection, one that I use for everything, like this brush I used for bronzing, blush and highlighter in a video that I filmed just before this. So you can use it for a lot of things. Um, it was just one brush, one brush that I wanted to represent my love for Hakuhodu by just buying a simple brush from their signature series. Now. If you are like a makeup artist, um, you you may very well want a brush kit full of these brushes. It's going to cost you an absolute bomb, um, but you, you might like that. You might like the bougie look of it. Um, so that is a decision you have to make for yourself. However, if you do not feel that you need this in your life, you can very safely go to the S100 BK series and buy the exact same brush for a few dollars cheaper. The next range is the Cocotan range of brushes and these are visually just stunning brushes. I don't have any personally to show you. It's it's a range that I definitely want to pick a brush up from to add to my collection. Um, but essentially what you have with these brushes visually is an ebony handle and a black matte chrome sort of brass uh, feral. So they're, they're dark, they're, um, I don't know, they just, they look kind of like mysterious, like magic tools that you would use. They are beautiful, beautiful brushes. Um, again, this is a little bit of an expensive range, um, but you will find really beautiful brushes in there that do pretty much everything. You'll have eye brushes, face brushes, there's even some fan brushes in there. They also have uh, some portable brushes in there. So some portable lip brushes, face brushes, eye brushes uh, that have the shorter handles. So uh, if you like portable brushes, that could also be an area in which to look for uh, specific brushes. Now the hair compositions, again, um, most of them are like animal hair or animal hair combinations and there are some animal and synthetic combinations in there. So you'll be able to see that information. If you look at a brush and you're like, I like the look of that brush and you open it up, it'll show um, what the brush is made up of, uh, the diameter, the length, all that jazz. So you can find all of that information on each individual brush page. So the next range of brushes is the Basic Series. Now, don't let that name fool you. <laughs> this series is by no means basic. Um, it is pretty much just a selection of their best selling brushes. So if you are the type of person, you know about brushes, you know what brushes work for you, you know that you love, um, say you love angled contour brushes or you love big fluffy face brushes or you want, um, I don't know, small eyeshadow brushes or big fluffy brushes. If you know what you want from a brush, if you're not going in completely blind, this is actually a good place to start, especially if you want brushes that are reasonably priced, especially for, you know, the 
the quality of the brush, this is where you want to go. This is the area that you want to start to look through. Now there are a lot of brushes in this particular range. There's 53 and many of the brushes come from other ranges. So like the J range or I think even the K range. Um, but essentially what they've done is they've gone through all of their brushes, they've looked at their most popular brushes and they've put them all in one spot so people can very quickly go through just their most popular brushes. Now, I really think that this is a great place to start if you already have an idea of what you want. If you are going in completely blind and you don't know what you want, this is still a good place to look but it may be overwhelming because there are a lot of brushes within this range. So you can you can get into a little bit of a rabbit hole with that. Um, if you've got hours to browse and like do your research, go for it. Go into that B range and start opening up tabs with different brushes and, you know, checking measurements and checking um, like hair compositions and stuff like that. Like that is a, a great place, um, but it can be overwhelming if you have no clue what brushes you want. Within the basic range, you will find all sorts of brush cuts and hair compositions. You will find um, animal hair, you will find synthetic, you will find blends of different animal hairs and uh, animal hair and synthetic. So there are so many, so many brushes in there. It is, it's crazy. Even me knowing what I want from Hakuhodu, when I go into the B range, I like, I can spend hours in there just going one of them, one of them, one of them, one of them. And then you look at your cart and you're like, oh shit, I picked 20 of the same brush. So I definitely think that that, that particular range um, being so large is is one that you can really lose a lot of time in um, if you're looking and if you if you're not time poor then that's fine um, but just be aware that the B range is huge it has heaps of amazing brushes um, and you'll probably spend a lot of time browsing it next is the G series and I I love the G series I discovered some absolutely outstanding brushes the last time I did a haul um, in the G series and I like yeah I would definitely like pay attention this series is really cool um, there are an absolute fuckload of brushes in this series I'm pretty sure there's like 77 brushes so again time sink but essentially what I get from this range is that these are kind of like trendy brushes so brushes to do trending stuff um they've got like huge eyebrow application brushes they've got um highlighting brushes these were like you know uh, personally i felt like the haku hodu range they never lacked highlighting brushes all right don't don't get me wrong there was no lack of highlighting brushes a lot of brushes were promoted as like multi-purpose which is smart because I look at Haku Hodu as like a, um, a brand that a lot of professionals would go to for amazing quality brushes um, and you know if you're doing like if you're freelancing um, doing things like weddings or special occasions or whatever you don't want to be carrying around 200 brushes like it's just it's too much so Having a brush that would do like like this guy, which the reason I bought it, it will do, it'll apply uh, face powder, bronzer, blush, highlight, like that's four jobs that one brush will do without having to clean it. So I felt like a lot of Haku Hodu brushes were like that. They were multi-use. So there was no lack of highlighting brushes, but within this range, you start to see the sort of traditional highlighting brushes. For example, this is from the G range and you can see it is, you know, a large highlighting brush. Um, black handles, silver ferrule, beautiful, beautiful. Um, that is what all Haku Hodu brushes look like except for brushes from the Kokutan range, um, the S100 and the S100 uh, BK series. And then obviously they have like travel brushes and um, like kabuki brushes and fan brushes and stuff that don't have this um, handle and ferrule combination. Uh, but that is the typical Hakuhodu 
visual of a brush. Now the brushes in this range I personally feel are quite affordable for what they are. So this one in particular cost me 35 US dollars. Um, there are some more expensive brushes in the range. This is a place where you will find some of their foundation brushes that just blew my fucking mind. So they're goat and synthetic fiber um, hairs. Now if you've got goat on its own or squirrel on its own or like horse on its own and you use those brushes to apply liquids, you can damage the hairs. They won't always be damaged. Sometimes I still do it. I break all the rules, uh, but you can damage them. And when you're talking about brushes that are costing you, you know, 30 or 40 plus US dollars, like the foundation brush was, I think, 70 something US dollars, you don't want to be damaging or maybe you don't even want to risk damaging that brush. So my advice is if you do want a foundation brush that is designed for using with liquids and powders, go the extra step to do the research and find the brushes that are specifically designed for that. Don't be lazy with just going, oh, that'll do because your results, like application results, won't be quite as nice as they could be and you put that brush at risk of being damaged. So that's my advice. On the page where it's got like the list of brushes, you can see ones that are very specifically designed to use with liquids and powders. They say in the title. So the G series is really cool. Um, I would definitely recommend checking that one out. If you, you know, if you're like, oh, I just want eyeshadow blending brushes um, and you find them in another series, if you're making an order, I'll still recommend checking out the G series because there's some interesting stuff in there and um, you might see something that you have to add to your cart or that goes onto your wish list for next time. But yeah, I love, love the G series. Next up is the I series and there's actually two I series in Hakuhodu's range. There is a capital I series and then there is a little I series. Um, I don't know why they weren't just like put together. I haven't worked out why. Maybe one was brought out before the other and they decided not to merge them. I don't know. Um, but what's going on with these two ranges is that they are 100% synthetic brushes. So these are considered vegan friendly. Um, there are no animal hairs in any of the brushes within this range. And you will find powder brushes, eye brushes, um, you know, face color brushes, all of it. Everything's in there. If you want to own Haku Hodu brushes, but you do not want to own animal hair brushes, this is where you would buy your brushes from both of the eye ranges. The brushes you will find in these ranges are Haku Hodu's classic shapes as well. So um, they are designed to, you know, do a full face and a multitude of jobs. So if you ever wanted a Haku Hodu brush, but you don't want animal hair, the eye range is where you should look. J series, this one is, this is, it's got a lot of brushes. It's big guys, it's very big. So what you'll find in here are a multitude of different cuts of brushes, face, eye, lip, brow, like all of it, all right? They've got everything in this range. Um, now, my advice is, uh, actually, before I get on to advice, let me say that the brush hair compositions are a mixture of, like, completely natural hairs or, you know, animal hairs, um, some synthetic brushes and some blends of animal and synthetic. Now, my advice with this range is if you are confident looking through the B range and going, yeah, I want that, I want that, I know, you know, I know what I'm buying and I'm not getting analysis paralysis, then you can move on to the J series and the J series will give you analysis paralysis because there are so many brushes in there. Now, when you're going through things like the G series, the J series, the K series, you may be on the... Um, the page looking at brushes and you might notice that the the brush name will be here's an example uh, B142 BKSL equals J142 
BKSL. Now the reason that you're seeing that is because that exact brush, it's called the J142 BKSL, but it has become part of the B series because it is a very popular brush that people buy and love to use. So you will find double ups of brushes within the ranges. In the J series, again, you will find kind of affordable brushes. Um, you'll be able to get like eyeshadow brushes easy under 20 US dollars. Um, and face brushes always, they're always more expensive. So, you know, that's, it's a sad state of affairs, but it is the way it is. Um, you're going to find heaps of brushes in here, guys. It's just, it's completely overwhelming. Like even me just looking at it, I'm just like, Seriously, can, can I just have one of everything and then I don't ever have to look at this range again? Because how do you choose? How do you choose from brushes that you know are going to be absolutely amazing no matter what? And there's so many. There's nearly a hundred brushes in this particular range. So while the J series is absolutely massive um, and some of the brushes do show up in the B series I would still highly recommend having a look in there because there are some gems and just because it's not in the B series doesn't mean it's not an amazing brush so definitely take the time to check that series out um, I, I love I love my J brushes um, and look I'm I'm tempted to hit add to cart right now shouldn't shouldn't have filmed this video today I, I want to buy something next is the k series now the k series is a very small core selection of brushes you'll find 19 brushes in there and haku hodu promote this as popular with everyone uh from makeup beginners to makeup artists i would totally believe that i yes i agree um now the thing with this collection is that you will essentially find a full face of makeup brushes in here now if you're the type of person who um you know you want a powder brush a blush brush a bronzing brush a highlighting brush you want an eyeshadow packing brush you want a blending brush for mattes uh you want a brow applicator you want a spoolie all that jazz you can actually find that in here all right but that is pretty much the whole range of brushes. So, um, you know, there is something in here for either one, one brush for each job or one brush for multiple jobs. So if that's either of them, if that's what you're looking for and you are, you know, totally having a hard time getting around the Hakuhodu website, you can totally look in here. Now, some of these brushes I do feel are a little bit little bit more expensive than some other brushes you might find on the website but it comes down to the fact that they're they're amazing quality um so you'll also find in here some like metal eyelash combs which are fantastic uh spoolies and like dual sided brow combs so with the plastic comb on one side and the um hair bristles on the other there's also some angled um brow application brushes in there as well so good little series um not confusing i think when you go in here you might look at it and look if you're familiar with hakuhodu you're probably going to look in here and go that's boring um Especially if you've spent hours uh, going through their website discovering like amazing brushes, but don't don't be fooled by this little selection. These are fantastic brushes that are going to do a job and they're going to do it really well. And you'll find brushes in here that can do multiple jobs at once. Well, not at once, but they can do multiple jobs. Next up is the 200 series. Now the 200 series is another small collection of brushes. You'll only find about 15 brushes in here. And not all of them, but a lot of them are designed to be good for using with powders and liquids or creams. So if you um, if you think to yourself, all right, 
love Hakuhoda brushes and I want one that I can like an eyeshadow brush that I can use with my uh, powder eyeshadows like pressed powders or pigments and then I want something that can also be dipped into like a paint pot or a cream eyeshadow. This is where you probably want to like start looking. Um, there's, you're definitely going to find brushes across the whole website that can do this but it's not going to take hours and hours of opening up different windows and checking like you know what they're good for this is a good place to start if you're looking for that now there are brushes in this range that are designed to only be used with powder so do be mindful of that make sure you read the information when you open up the brush page um, you will also find lip brushes in here so um, if you want a lip brush go straight to the 200 series because it's going to save you a lot of time all right let's get into the more I don't know these aren't specialized brushes but they're just kind of special brushes should we we'll just call them special brushes so we'll start with the Japanese traditions series so in here you're going to find the brushes that are wrapped with cane around the handle um, they are absolutely stunning um, there's also um, some Itabake brushes so these are they're kind of like the Nas Ida brush or Ida brush whatever whatever that thing's called um, and there's all different like shapes and sizes and all sorts of stuff these are beautiful these are very Japanese brushes so if you ever wanted to add a like a true Japanese brush to your range look here and I gotta say they're not that expensive they're really not I I think I might I help I need to buy one Next we have the Kinoko and Fan Brush range. So Kinoko is the Japanese word for mushrooms. Uh, so we would commonly know these types of brushes as kabuki brushes. And they have a whole different range of kabuki brushes. They have domed ones, they've got flat ones, they've got slightly curved ones, um, they've got angled ones. There's a huge range in there. So there's a kabuki brush to fit all of your kabuki brush needs. They also have their fan brushes and their fan brushes are designed to gently sweep product onto the face and typically things like um, powders. So face powder, finishing powder, blush and you can also use the fan brushes for like contouring. So they're great. Um, they have some very, very, very expensive brushes in this range. Um, but they also have some that are fairly affordable as well. So, you know, go forth and spend. Kibo Family Series. Now, I really like this series of brushes. It actually only contains four brushes in the whole range. There is a G brush and there is three J brushes. I have the G brush and I love this. Now, the whole idea behind this range is that um, the brushes are designed to apply product in a very, very soft manner. So the description on the website says, uh, brushes for the traditional Japanese art of, I think it's pronounced Meiki, uh, adapted from makeup application. Meiki is the art of decorating lacquerware with gold, silver, and platinum powder. Hakuhodu's Kibo makeup brushes have a fluffy open structure that will allow um, that will apply powder makeup softly in a dreamly delicate look and that is exactly what this brush does my god this is such a good brush I picked this up in Japan and the reason I bought it was because I was like I have nothing like that and I love trying new brush shapes I've I'd never ever seen anything quite like this before and I use this for applying blush and what I discovered with this particular brush is that if I use this with blushes that turn me into a clown I can get a beautiful soft application if you're the type of person who feels like you constantly look like a clown with blush me um, because you have a heavy hand or your blushes are simply too pigmented buy this just buy it it'll change your life it's gonna set you back 32 US dollars but such a good brush such a good brush 
I am going to butcher the name of this uh, family of brushes. It is the Oigi Family Series, and this is a selection of 12 fan brushes. So there are only fan brushes in here. If you are looking for a fan brush for any job, any size, any density, this is where you want to look. Um, they have teeny tiny ones, they have large ones, they have medium ones, they have angled ones, they have domed ones, flat ones, they've got them. They're all in there and they're all pretty affordable as well. I want, I want the short and angled one. I don't know what for, but that's I need to get off this website, seriously, it's so bad, help me. The last range I'm gonna talk about um, in depth is the Artistic Pro Series. Now, the Artistic Pro Series is where you'll find your detail brushes. So these brushes are specifically designed for doing very, very detailed work. And um, I suppose, like, you look at this and you're like, oh, so many eyeliner brushes. But actually, there are specific brushes in this series that are designed for specific things. There are um, some that are designed for makeup applications, so like gel and liquid liners. There are some that are designed for um, nail art. And then there are some that are designed just for like normal day-to-day -day painting jobs. So let's go through them. So there are P brushes, which are just standard brushes, great for painting. Just, you want to paint something beautiful, go a standard brush. There's a PH, which is, it stands for a hard brush. They're great for nail art. And then you've got a PS, and they're the soft ones. And they're the ones you wanna buy if you're looking to buy something you can use with a gel or a liquid eyeliner. Then we have the numbers. Now the numbers represent the circumference of the bristles, so how thick they are. We've got a 3-0, they're gonna be your thinnest eyeliner brushes or painting brushes. Then we have a zero, a six, and a 10. So you could almost consider those three like small, medium, large, and the um, 3.0 like an extra small, basically. But we don't... <laughs> Don't actually call them small, medium, large because um, after some of the numbers, you might find an SML, which stands for small, medium, large, and that represents the length of the bristles. Um, hopefully, I'm gonna, I've got plans in my brain to put up the images. Hopefully, they, that will help you to understand better what I'm getting at. I think once you understand this range, um, it's extremely, like, you can pick out your brush in a second. Um, but if you look at this and you don't understand what all of the numbers and letters mean, it could be confusing for you and you might be like, which one do I buy? So all you need to know if you are looking to buy uh, makeup brushes, so something you can use with makeup, you want the PS brushes, whatever size, whatever length, go for your life. If you want to do a painting and you want something that will do beautiful detail work go for a p brush and if you want to do nail art go for a ph brush okay okay the last few pages you'll find on their website are things like accessories um in there they actually have a, a solid brush shampoo which i'd like to try one day and uh something that really surprised me they have makeup in there I don't, I don't know what that's about. Um, there's brush sets, so if you find it way too difficult to choose individual brushes, you could totally just choose a brush set. Uh, they have portable brushes, like travel brushes, so if you're really keen on um, portable brushes, they've got a page for that. Um, they do have a best sellers page. It is a very, very small selection of um, makeup brushes and then there is the all feud page and that will pretty much bring up all of the brushes in one full category um, so have fun with that I'm just I've never done it and I look it's not something I want to do let's see how many pages 19 pages 19 pages all right, guys, so I think that's pretty much all I can give you. Um, actually, one last bit of advice. I think something that might help you make good purchasing choices when you're shopping on the Hakuhodu website is, let's say you, you find a brush that looks enticing to you and you click on it and you go into its page. 
um, you'll be able to see that they give you measurements of the bristles. So um, you'll be able to see like how long the hairs are. It will show you the thickness of the hairs. You'll be able to see the full length of the brush from like base to tip of hairs. Um, it will tell you what type of ferrule it is, uh, also the handle type, um, the use. All you've got to do is you can read the little description at the top, then it'll have features. Actually, when you're looking at this on a on a web page, it'll be to the right. Um, on a phone, it's sort of like you scroll down past there. And you'll find this information so you've got the two like this is a 200 series brush you've got the um, the description of the range you've got the features of the brush underneath and then you've got the product info so I would definitely recommend reading that it might help you to distinguish between brushes that look very similar um, if you let's say you have large eyes and you're looking at three different blending brushes and they all look the same but you know that they can't be exactly the same check the product info that's going to tell you like how thick the bristles are how long they are um you might go oh that brush that i thought was a medium blender would actually be considered a large blender or a small blender and probably not suitable for what I wanted it for. So you might be able to eliminate that and find more brushes that are going to meet the expectations that you have for the brushes. Um, having a little ruler or a measuring tape on hand and a couple of your favorite brush sizes. So say you've got favorite blending brushes, face brushes, um, I don't know, eyeshadow packing brushes, have a couple of them with you. Um, so then you can compare the measurements of those to brushes you're looking at on the website. That will help you to get an idea of what you're actually going to have delivered to you because buying brushes online, like a lot of other makeup, can be a little bit scary. Sometimes you don't know if you're going to get what you're expecting. All right, guys, I've got to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.